I'm reshooting this intro because of no particular reason. Um, my hair just looked really dumb in the last take. Hi, I'm back from my five month long break that was completely unintentional and unplanned, but I'm back. This is before the script is even finished, so I'm definitely not in the editing phase. I genuinely have no idea how this video is going to turn out or if this is ever going to get posted. This script was very taxing on me to write because of how heck dark it is. So I felt the need to heck come on here and give a bunch of trigger warnings. Here's all the trigger warnings that you need, and please don't take these lightly. These are very prevalent in the video. Very, like, mentioned throughout the video. <laughs> like, I'll give timestamps and everything, but they're, they're there, like, pretty much throughout the whole thing. So, look after yourself. Yeah. Going to therapy has become a much less hush-hush topic than it has been in a while. In a study published in 2021 by John and Ethelene, around 41 point Point seven million people receive treatment for their mental health. Advancements are constantly being made to make therapy a more beneficial experience for everyone, but what happens when there's a hiccup in that process? What are the consequences when therapy isn't beneficial? Well, the consequences can range from something really minor. Um, you can just quit therapy if it isn't working for you, but what happens when you lose a life because of it? Today we're going to be discussing the case of Candace Newmaker and how it delves in to that subject. We're also going to be discussing rebirthing therapy and if it's beneficial or not and also the consequences when it isn't. Candace was born Candace D.R. Elmwood, her teenage mother and a violent father. Her siblings su suffered extreme neglect and abuse um, in the care of her biological parents and eventually she was put in foster care. Candace lived in about five dis different foster homes before being adopted by a woman named Jean Newmaker who was a pediatric nurse practitioner. The motive for Jean Newmaker adopting Candace in the first place kind of tells you what kind of person she is. She was just very lonely and needed someone to love but that's not really when you should adopt a kid in my opinion. Maybe seek your own counseling before you adopt a child. Now, because Candace went through so much trauma under her biological parents, um, she had a lot of problems and a lot of issues attaching to Jean. And Jean was very confused by um, Candace not being able to attach to her. But if you do any research on adopting foster kids, it is to be expected that they will have issues forming a bond with you because they've been burned in the past, you know? But Candace was no regular foster kid. She was very reactive. She would set things on fire and kill her pets reportedly. She was extremely angry and defiant and wouldn't listen to Jean. She was overall just a very troubled child who had behavioral issues. Okay, while I was editing, I found out two major things about this case that I want to add. First of all, for this section, Candace's teachers reportedly claimed that she wasn't a misbehaved child. She didn't have major behavioral problems. So we have no idea if June was even telling the truth. So that just adds a little flame to the fire. So keep that in mind while you watch this video. Take everything Jean says with a grain of salt. Candace was sent to a long list of therapists and tried out many medications, but none of them seemed to be improving her behavior at all. And if they did, it was very minimal and didn't really solve the problem. One of the diagnoses that Candace received was reactive attachment disorder. And that is basically when a child suffers at the hands of a caretaker and then has trouble forming bonds with any um, other caretakers. Now, this is kind of when this guy lit up for Jean. She had finally had answers and what to treat for Candace, and she searched for four more years to find a therapy that would be specific for reactive attachment disorder and that would work for her child. And in that search, she found a um, alternative form of therapy called rebirthing therapy. Rebirthing therapy was developed in the 1960s by Leonard Orr, who was a spiritual guru and not a mental health professional. The technique originally focused on breath work, but then evolved into really what it, what it is today, which is essentially um, simulating the birthing process so someone can be born without the trauma that they were subjected to in this life. The technique is extremely dangerous and frowned upon, and it also hasn't been scientifically proven pretty much at all. I have, couldn't find any sources that backed up any of the claims that it works so despite this gene newmaker um went through with the therapy she paid like seven thousand dollars for a two week long treatment and she drove from north carolina to colorado which is like over a thousand miles the first week apparently did lead to improvements but 
The second week is when things went from dodgy to deadly. Everything in the program had led up to this rebirthing ritual, and that is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, it is supposed to be a child being put in a simulated womb, and they're supposed to wiggle their way out of it until they are born, and that's it that's what's supposed to help them and what's supposed to like finalize the treatment. The patient is wrapped up in a blanket and pressed down to where they can't move and they're supposed to wiggle their way out of it anyways. Also, I'd like to add that this was performed in a unlicensed therapist basement on, I think, the floor. So, the fact that Jean thought this was okay was really telling. The entire session was recorded so Jean could witness her child's birth in the other room. The transcript is readily available online and I am going to be covering it. Uh, so here's the timestamp if you're not comfortable with that. Um, I completely understand it. It's really not necessary for the video, but if you want to get the whole feel of what Candace went through, then I'm going to go over some of the worst parts. Also, I'm not going to have a lot of eye contact with this part because I am reading the transcript, so sorry. Um... Candace was instructed to lay down in the fetal position on top of a navy blue blanket in which she was wrapped it tightly. The ends were bound over her head by Julie Ponder, another unlicensed psychotherapist who participated in the program. She was covered with pillows as four adults pressed on her. At the beginning of the video, Jean Newmaker states, I'm so excited. I'm going to have a brand new baby. I hope it's a girl. I'm going to love her and hold her and tell her stories. I'm going to keep her very safe. Every day we'll be together and she'll be with me forever. Candace is asked if she believes this in response. Yes. Kelnell Watkins, the lead psychotherapist, is then asked if she's ready to be reborn. And Candace replies, uh-huh. Candace then tries to get out of the makeshift wound for around eight minutes before she expresses that she can't get out. Asking for instructions on what to do, to which none of the therapists give any helpful answers. 11 minutes passed and Candace says she feels like she's going to die and that she can't breathe. She asks the doctors to stop pushing her but gets no response. Ponder asks if she wants to die and Candace says no, but I'm about to. Candace continues to plead to be let go and begging for her life, but none of this is given any attention. Can you let me have some oxygen? You mean you really want me to die for real? She asks. Uh-huh, Ponder replies. Die right now and go to heaven, she asks again. Go ahead and die right now, for real, for real. Ponder says, okay, I'm dead, Candace says. A few minutes later, Candace loses control of her bodily functions. This is an early sign of death setting in. Stay in there with the poop and vomit, Watkins says. Jean Newmaker begins talking about Candace. I'm so excited to have this baby. I'm waiting for you, to love you, and to hold you, she says. Candace, Ponder says, taking another pillow from Jean. Candace does not respond. She needs more pressure over here, so she can't. So she really needs to fight. This continues for a few minutes longer. Ponder remarks, she gets to be stuck with her own puke and poop. Watkins does, uh-huh, it's her own life, quitter. Candace utters her last words in response, no. Candace becomes unconscious a few minutes later. Candace is used to making her life everybody else's problem. She's not used to living her own life, Watkins says. Ponder begins rep repeatedly insulting Candace. Quitter, quitter, quit, 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 quit. She's a quitter. Watkins tells the other two therapists to take a break. They talk about unrelated topics such as their dream homes and property that's being sold nearby. Meanwhile, Candace is lying unconscious under the blanket. Let's talk to the twerp, Watkins says. Oh, she's sleeping in her own vomit. After the adults realized that Candace wasn't breathing, she was rushed to the hospital, but she was pronounced dead the next day. She had struggled for a total of 70 minutes under the weight of 673 pounds. Now that's absolutely vile. The transcript part is probably the darkest part of this case. And the fact that you actually get to see what Candace went through really just destroys me and how cruel they were towards her as she was dying. Because the main defense in this trial was that they didn't know but there's absolutely no way that they didn't know that this girl was dying. There's absolutely no way that they did not understand that she was not being manipulative and that she was actually going to suffocate if they did not let her free. There isn't a lot of information regarding the trial online, but I did find a couple of statements from Ponder and Watkins and Jean and all of them. The main defense in the trial that Watkins had was that she believed that Candace was being manipulative and not actually suffocating. And also that she didn't intend for Candace to die that day and that she had good intentions. She also stated that she believed that Jean Newmaker would have her daughter taken away if she did not do this. Steve Jensen, a prosecutor in the child, argued for the maximum sentence and referred to it as a torturous cruelty of a sickening and depraved nature. He also stated that Watkins showed little remorse 
for um killing Candace. And I honestly agree with that. Um there are multiple accounts that said Ponder and um Watkins did not show any remorse until they were sentenced. Conal Watkins was convicted of reckless child abuse resulting in death and was sentenced to 16 years in prison. She was an absolute wreck during her sentencing despite showing absolutely no emotion throughout the rest of the trial. Uh, she was hugging her lawyers and just absolutely sobbing. She felt very 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 sorry for herself. She was also convicted of criminal impersonation, obtaining a signature by deception, and an unlawful practice of psychotherapy. In her statement to the court, she stated, I feel sorrow, regret, and remorse that torments me every waking hour. I failed Candace and I failed her mother. I accept full responsibility and I am ready for what you require of me. My intention was to help Candace, not hurt her. And like I said, this remorse was not present um, throughout the rest of the trial, just during her sentencing. Watkins only served half of her sentence. She served seven years, which is actually less than half. Um, and then she was paroled and sent to a halfway house, which is basically a rehabilitation facility um that's supposed to integrate criminals back into society she didn't even have that many restrictions she was just basically required to wear an ankle bracelet that monitored lo her location and she wasn't allowed to work in the psychotherapy field she also had some restrictions when it came to interacting with children but i couldn't find the details on that jean was also put in trial and she was given a lesser sentence in her statement to the court she said i knew it was a provocative therapy and i thought it was our only chance every recommendation was being implemented but it wasn't having an impact i was very concerned that it wasn't going anywhere she was given a four-year suspended sentence, which is literally nothing. She was basically given probation for four years, and if she was on good behavior and uh, prescribed to the terms, then she would basically be free. And also, it was expended from her record when the four years were up. She was convicted of negligent child abuse revolting in death. That is absolutely insane to me. This woman did not spend a day in jail. Um she oh god this case makes me so fucking mad <laughs> it's not even like we don't know what she did because she was present throughout the entire thing and even if there was an intent there was still a consequence and i think you deserve to be punished for that i am back post editing uh i forgot another thing uh, I forgot to mention the sentences for the other two therapists that kind of got overshadowed by Ponder and Watkins. Uh, these are their names. I can't remember them off the top of my head, but I don't want anyone to forget that these people were also involved. They only got 10 years of probation. Um, <laughs> that is ridiculous. Okay, bye. Um, I won't see you again. Candace was not given a very long shot at life, and it wasn't very fair to her that she was put in such terrible hands. She came from a really dark place of trauma and pain and and was put into a place that did not understand that. Candace was not the only child who died due to this technique and maybe I'll cover them in the future um because this really makes me angry that this is still going on. Fortunately there were actions in place in Colorado to prevent this from ever happening in that state again. Uh, after Candace's death, Candace's law was signed, which banned the practice of rebirthing therapy in the state of Colorado. I think Candace Newmaker's case is criminally undercovered just because of the magnitude of the consequence, and I don't know. It's, it's something that has really boggled my mind ever since I heard about it. I think it would be good if more people talked about it and brought it to light because I think that's what Candace deserves. I sincerely hope that one day she gets her moment and she gets the real justice she deserves, but realistically that probably will never happen. I really hope it serves as a negative example for people who want to adopt foster children. Uh, but that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope you learned something from this and that you leave this with a sense of what can happen if this therapy continues to be implemented. So, have a nice night. Have a nice day. I'll see you in another five months. Yeah.